In this section of Economics of Information and Choice, we consider the very important economic concept of rational expectations. Rational expectations theory has made a big splash in macroeconomics, but it's actually applied widely in microeconomics, but not really actually talked about. When we think about rational expectations, the context is dealing with how do we understand information and choice when we don't exactly know the probabilities in front of us? So we want to think about this unknown probabilities or how we make estimates about things where we might not know all of the trade-offs and only know perhaps a distribution. So to introduce this, we want to think about true uncertainty here, not just risk. And this concept can be elaborated with Frank Knight's distinction between these two of risk and uncertainty. So Frank Knight put forward these ideas that risk is dealing with known probabilities that we know we have a 50% chance at $10,000 and a 50% chance at $0, how does the person behave? That's taking on a risk, saying, well, I might get the big payoff and I might end up with nothing. But uncertainty, Frank Knight argues, is something completely different. It is dealing with unknown probabilities. True uncertainty is not susceptible to measurement, according to Knight. Knightian uncertainty is a lack of any quantifiable knowledge about some possible occurrence, as opposed to the quantifiable risk that we're dealing with when we know the distribution, we know the probabilities, right? How do we know a lot of times when we take on an investment if we have a 50% chance at a payoff of $5,000? Often we don't, right? Most of life isn't like a casino where we have calculable gambles, where we know the potential payoffs, we know the probabilities of what will happen. So does economics blow up if we lose our probabilities when we think about information and choice theory? And the answer is, well, no. Why? Because we have rational expectations theory. Rational expectations theory implies that we probably don't need to know our actual probability. The leading theoretical effort to formalize the link between subjective probabilities and the real world is known as rational expectations or RE theory. A simple characterization of rational expectations is a person has RE, rational expectations, if judgments are unbiased, meaning the mean error is zero and mistakes are uncorrelated with available information. What having this mean error of zero means is that, well, sometimes we guess, say, five degrees too warm, and sometimes we guess five degrees too cold, but if we take the average of our error, the average of our error is zero. The five degrees too high is offset with the five degrees too low, and we're uncorrelated with uh, available information, so our mistakes aren't predictable in some way. They're not moving in some way. In other words, all errors that we have are simply put random. So the standard modeling technique is that everyone is unbiased. Information, or lack thereof, just changes the estimate's variance or de standard deviation, but we have this mean error of zero. So our, our estimates are centered all the time around the correct answer where there's zero error. But if we have more information, then we reduce the variance. We have a very tight distribution going on. But if we have very little information, then we would have this looser type of a distribution where our errors are way off sometimes, sometimes you know, very far away from the correct answer. Whereas if we have lots of information, the vast majority of our guesses end up somewhere in these regions where, you know, we're pretty much close to the right answer. And so we can think about that as being how the uh, rational expectations theory deals with just more information coming in. We fit within the narrower distribution if we have more information and if we have less information, we're in kind of a broader, wider spread a uh, thicker tail distribution that we have, right? And so, for instance, if we guess how many peanuts are in a jar, some guesses will be over, some will be under, but on average, it might be just about right. The more information we have about the peanuts and the more information about the jar we have, the less variance and the more like this kind of narrow distribution uh, we will hit and the less like this wider distribution we will be in.
right? And rational expectations and having these kind of distributions where it's centered around the correct answer, it seems kind of crazy, but if you think about it, you can think of some real world examples such as attending college or graduate school. No one knows for sure how they will do, but rational expectation says that people on average will somewhat correctly guess how well they do in the program. And it's not as though we often see just tons of people coming into school thinking that they will uh, be much better in their graduate program than they actually were or vice versa. Or you can also think of another example of uh, going out uh, to the bar and trying to socialize and meet new people. No one knows for sure uh, what the probability is that they will meet somebody that they want to date or a friend or something like that that night. But if you actually had to come up with estimates, you would probably do fairly well and you might have this mean uh, error of zero and guess right on average. Now we can think about efficiency implications of this kind of symmetric but imperfect information and think about what happens when we have rational expectations. So a lot of times what happens is we will state that market outcomes are inefficient if there's imperfect information. But this could be a very gross overstatement if we have rational expectations, right? Market efficiency and imperfect information could be compatible. You apply rational expectations and a lot of times the problem goes away. Just because you are ignorant does not mean that you are stupid. Just because you don't know and you have uncertainty does not mean that you can't make a reasonable guess and on average be correct. If you are completely uncertain, you adopt more general purpose strategies that take into account all of the possible outcomes. In addition, if there are large losses due to big information problems, that means there are big profits available for anyone who can solve them. See the market in its proper market process context, and we could see that even though there's imperfect information, there could be other institutional factors to help us overcome these informational problems, or we can just use our standard modeling tools and apply rational expectations, and some of the problems go away. Right? And these models, uh, this, this argument is particularly true if all sides are equally ignorant and we have symmetric but imperfect information. All right, so there we have the important concept within the economics of information and choice known as rational expectations, a very important concept within micro and macroeconomics, this idea that the mean error is zero, the judgments of individuals are unbiased and mistakes are uncorrelated with available information when we're dealing with uncertainty. We have a distribution and its center point is actually the correct answer. So that idea is that all errors are random and that people on average get things correct. And that is rational expectations and the concept that we can apply within this world of the economics of information and choice.